motion is massively underrated and a lot of people don't know about the amazing effects that come with it. So today I'm going to show you five powerful effects that come built into Apple Motion that you really need to be using. Also at the end of this video, I'm going to show you how you can get these effects over into Final Cut Pro. The first filter on this list is the bump map filter. Now the bump map filter can be used for a massive variety of reasons, usually pertaining to visual effects, but I'm just going to give you a very quick rundown of what you can do with it. Here I have my logo. I'm going to go up to filters, go to distortion and then select bump map. Now to use the bump map filter, we need something to drive it. So we'll go on over to the library to our generators and locate the clouds generator. I'll just apply that into that same group, go back to the inspector, then we'll select the bump map and click and drag the clouds into this bump map. Now any changes we make to these clouds will apply to the bump map. So if I were to adjust the horizontal scale, the vertical scale, anything like that, it would apply onto this bump map filter and it would displace the image underneath. Now if I push play, you can actually see how that's warping the image. But something that's really powerful with the bump map filter is you can actually keyframe the different effects. So selecting the bump map filter, we can go back to the very beginning and find the amount slider. I'm just going to drag that all the way up to 10. We'll click to add a keyframe and move forward about a second. Then we can just set that down to zero. If I push command eight, we can get the keyframe editor. I can click and drag over both these keyframes right click and select ease both. So now it's going to have a nice eased animation. I'm going to push command eight again to hide that. And if we push play, we'll have this nice little animation of our logo coming into view. So this is just a really basic use case for the bump map filter. You can use it for all sorts of different visual effects or just to really spice up different logos in your videos. The next filter is going to seem really simple, but it's actually far more powerful than you might first suspect. Now, let's say I wanted to add an outline onto my logo here. Well, we could go up to filters, border, and then select stroke. And you'll see how it's provided me with this nice red outline. We can of course go in and change the color of this outline, but something that's really powerful with this filter is we can actually change it from color over to gradient. So you can get this nice gradient over the entirety of the stroke. We could also go down and adjust stuff like the width, the offset, the threshold amount, the fade inside or the fade outside, totally up to you, and the fade fall off. You can also select hide source. And why I love this is because, let's say, we'll just select this nice color here. With my logo selected, I'm gonna push K to create a clone layer, and I'm gonna click and drag this stroke filter onto that clone layer specifically. Now I'm gonna come down and select hide source, and if I disable the underlying layer, you can see how it's just this nice outline. But what's really cool about that is we could select this clone layer, go up to filters, glow, and then select neon. And now we have this nice neon glow around our logo. So we can adjust these settings to get them to our liking here. I'll go back to those stroke settings and adjust that offset to be zero. So it's just right around the image. This next filter has all sorts of different use cases, one of which being applied to text. With this text selected, I'll go up to filters, go down to distortion, and then select slice scale. You should see these on-screen controls. Let's go ahead and go on over to our edit slices checkbox and enable that. We'll slide the different slices into position just like so, depending on where we want the cuts to be made. Then we can go ahead and disable that. Now, as I stretch it out, you'll notice that the stretching only happens wherever I have set up these lines. So this can be really powerful to get an interesting look with your different text items. And you can, of course, go in and keyframe everything if you want to, just like so, to get really unique different text animations. This next filter indent is a ton of fun to play around with. With these clouds selected, I've kind of made them lava colored. We could go on up to filters, go down to stylize, and then select indent. Now you'll see how it's kind of given it this plasticky look. We can go ahead and adjust all these different settings to our liking. Stuff like the light direction, which is really fun to play around with to get a th different three dimensional look on whatever you apply it to. We could drag the depth way up and you'll see how it's given this background this really nice plasticky texture to it, which is really fun to look at. Some other ways you could use the indent filter is if you wanted more of a Minecraft pixelated background, we could select these clouds, go up to filters, go down to stylize, and then select pixelate. We'll apply the pixelate filter underneath indent so that in the layer stack, the indent is on top. And from there, we can drag up the scale of our pixels. And you'll see how it's kind of given us these 3D pixels to work with. 
This last filter I love using in different ways than what it was originally intended and that is to actually select specific edges of a clip. We'll go on up to filters, we'll go down to stylize and select line art. Now originally this is intended to almost give it a pencil sketch look, but I love using it for a different reason. We can go ahead and adjust stuff like the threshold to get those lines looking how we want them. But then from there we can come down to the paper opacity. And if we drag that down to zero, now we just have these floating lines here. So what that means is if I were to take this original layer and I'm actually gonna apply the line art layer onto the top clone layer, which I created using K, you can start to see the lines showing up here. Then with the line art selected, we could change the ink color to whatever we want. I'll just change it over to this light blue. And because the line art is actually its own layer, we could apply some fun effects like neon. So we'll go on up into the filters, we'll go down to glow and then select neon. So now we have these nice glowing lines on our car. We can go in and adjust the brightness on each of these different values, get it looking exactly as we want it to. Then we can re-enable that lower layer. You could also go into this clone layer and add a blend mode like add or screen. But then what we could do from there is go into our clone layer, get a mask, and I'll just create a circle mask here on the left side. We'll go to the mask settings and drag the feather way up. Then we can go to the properties and find the position. Let's go ahead and click to add a keyframe on our position, then go to the very end and drag the position in a way so that it's all the way over to the right hand side, just like so. So now if we push play, we should have this nice little animation of these lines being drawn around this car in a really cool and powerful way. You could also go super crazy with the threshold and smoothness settings and get completely different looks. So this almost looks like we're in Tron or something along those lines. So that is five really powerful effects in Apple Motion that I think you should be using. And if you want to get these directly inside of Final Cut Pro, you have a couple options. The first is to publish it yourself using Motion. So I'm going to create a new Motion project. We're going to select the Final Cut effect and then push open. In here, you're going to locate the effect source, go on up to your filters and locate whatever filter you want to have over in Final Cut Pro. So let's say I want the bump map effect. We'll go on down to distortion and then select bump map. Then we can go to the inspector and in here we can publish each of these different parameters for us to use in Final Cut Pro. So under controls, we could click that, publish that. We could publish the direction. We could publish the amount, so on and so forth until we had all of these different values published for Final cut. However, an issue you're going to run into is this map image. You cannot publish this over into Final Cut Pro. So to fix that, what you're going to want to do is go on up to add object and then select drop zone. Then inside of this bump map, we can click and drag this drop zone into the map image. So now that's actually going to provide us with the ability to publish this over into Final Cut Pro. We can use that drop zone and it's going to apply it onto the bump map effect. Once we've published everything we could possibly want, we'll push Command S to save it. Then we can go ahead and type in whatever the template name is. So we could type in bump map. We could create a category for it, a theme, whatever you want to do to categorize this and then push publish. So now you'll always have access to this over in Final Cut Pro. And if you wanted all five of these effects, you would need to do that all five times. However, if you want to save yourself a whole bunch of time, I've actually gone through Apple Motion and published over 90 different effects for Final Cut Pro directly from Apple Motion. So if you want to have all of these effects plus way more, go ahead and follow the links down below, save yourself a ton of time and get access to a ton of additional features that Motion has that Final Cut Pro doesn't. With that being said, I hope this video was helpful to you in some way. If it was, consider pressing the like button, consider subscribing, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.